Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and I'm excited to bring you another episode absolutely free. This episode is just one of over 80 episodes we release monthly. Each one is meticulously digitally restored and stored in the cloud, which comes at a considerable expense. To help cover these costs, you might hear some advertisements throughout this episode. While we retain the original commercials for historical authenticity, you may encounter modern ads. We promise to keep these ads to a minimum and try to place them where you would have originally heard them when they aired. If you prefer an ad-free experience, you can support us by becoming a member on our Patreon page. Go to otrwesterns.com slash donate. Again, that's otrwesterns.com slash donate for more information. I want to emphasize that we're committed to providing this content to you for free, but also want to be transparent about the financial realities of producing these shows. As a reminder, if you're listening to this episode on a service you pay for, please know that they do not support this podcast in any way, and the ads will be in this episode. Now, let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be the Lone Ranger. Original air date is April 30th, 1948, and the title is Judge Brennan. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoy. fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver. The Lone Ranger had ridden hard from Frontier Town to the hideout in the Enchanted Hills where Tonto was waiting. Oh, sir. Oh, easy, silly big fella. You come plenty fast, Kimisabi. What happened? Easy, now, silly. Saddle up, Tonto, while I pack our gear. We're traveling north on a special mission. Oh. How far north we go? To Cimarron Gap. Oh. Why'd we go there? The judge not is getting old. He wants to devote all of his time to the bank if he can find a man to serve as judge. Oh. He's savvy. And there's been a lot of trouble between the homesteaders and cattlemen in Cimarron Gap. A man named Brennan is the law. Judge Nod has asked me to investigate him. If he's fair and just. We'll invite him to move into Frontier Town. You think he'd move? <laughs> According to Judge Nod, he'd be glad to move when he learns about Ma Willard. 
On. How that? Years ago, there was a celebrated singer known as Lindy Lou. Now, Brennan loved her, but she married a man named Willard. Oh. I guess Brennan never got over his love for the girl. He has a cafe in Cimarron Gap. He calls it the Lindy Lou. And he learns that Lindy Lou has been a widow for ten years and lives in Frontier Town. <laughs> well, first of all, we've got to find out if Brennan is a man to take Judge Knott's place on the bench. Yeah. Judge Brennan was a surly, cantankerous individual who spent most of his time at the bar of his small cafe in Cimarron Gap. He squinted disapprovingly at a short, broad-shouldered, scar-faced man who pushed through the bat-wing doors. Sure. This is a place they call the Lindy Lou. State your order and show your cash, mister. <laughs> yeah, pour out anything you've got. But be sure it's plenty strong. You're getting it, stranger. I reckon that picture on the wall is the girl you named this place for, huh? The stranger's first drink has to be a toast to Lindy Lou. That's my ruling. <laughs> it suits me. Here's to Lindy Lou. Hey, wait a minute, mister. It's Miss Lou when you speak it. To Miss Lou. Well, that's better. <laughs> <coughs> Shut my throat. Boy, stop it. Get the fire. When you drink I... a toast to Lindy Lou, you empty a glass. <laughs> but I, I can't. Drink I... it down. <laughs> all right, all right. You need to swing a gun on me. <laughs> that stuff. Uh, you're not as tough as you talk. What, what is that stuff? It's reserved special for critters that come in here talking big. <laughs> Call it tornado juice. Hey, Judge. What's the trouble, Slim? The boys are bringing Bart Holloway in here for trial. Well, Holloway, what'd he do? He shot a man. Left he and some of the other sort. All right, get over there to the bar. The judge will hold the court. There he comes. Yeah, where's my hammer? I haven't seen it. Oh, never mind, I'll use my six gun. Quiet down, boys. Quiet down. I'm holding court. There'll be no talk, cards, or drink till I'm done. First man to bend an elbow is fined $10 for contempt. Uh, judge, you the I... prisoner, Bart? Uh, yeah, but Then I... shut up. Left you tell me what happened. It was a disagreement between Bart Holloway and Breed Carlos. Breed's dead. You saw it, Lefty? Yes, sir. Breed went for his gun first, and Bart had to shoot. Wasn't Breed helping my friend Hank Loomis cull out a lot of cattle? That's right. Dad nabbed Bart by shooting Breed. You've made Hank shorthanded. You'll have a tough time handling this cattle without help. If I judge, it was South. Well, maybe so. But Hank didn't have no part in it. Hank's the one who'll suffer. It's not right. You took Hank's help away from him, so you got to work for Hank till he's done culling. On top of that, you're to stand cause a ban of breed. That's my ruling. Court's adjourned. Bar's open. <laughs> Just a minute, Lefty. I want to talk to you and Slim. What about, Judge? That homesteader. Oh, yeah. You mean Jim Sutton? Yeah. Well... Me and Lefty had another talk with him, Judge, but he won't clear out. No, he won't, huh? Did you tell him I said homesteaders weren't welcome around Cimarron Gap? We told him, but he's staying anyway. He's fencing his land and plowing it up. Fencing his land? Why, the double twisted... He's got no... the land from the government and he aims to keep it. We checked real careful, Judge. He's not breaking any laws. We let him stay and first thing we know, other nesters will be settling here. Pretty soon there'll be no more cattle range. Dad and Abbott, you two go get evidence of something against Sutton. But we checked, and he's not breaking any law. Well, check some more. I said to get something against him. Now go on and do it. All right, Judge. Come on, Lefty. I've got an idea. Maybe I know how we can get rid of the nest. All right, what's your idea? Clown and fence in his land. Why, the dead redded no good nest. Lindy but... Lou wouldn't like to hear talk like that. Huh? What's that? Take it easy, Judge Brennan. Mask. Why, Ginger, your mask of all Keep the... your hands above the bar. How'd you get in here without me seeing you? Oh, I've been here for some time. Back in the corner. There's a ten dollar fine for wearing a mask in town. That's my ruling. Keep your voice down. See here, you mentioned Lindy Lou. Yes, one of the most beautiful and talented women who ever appeared on the public stage. By golly, mister, you talk like the right kind of man. Judge Brennan, I saw a man go out of here a few minutes ago. He was short, broad-shouldered. Had a scar right here on his cheek. I remember the critter. He's a stranger in town. You don't know his name? No, but I don't like his kind. He looked to me like a man who's known as Scar Thorndike. What about him? Before I say any more, I want to talk to him. I think I'll see if I can find him. Hey, wait a minute. Come back here. I'll see you again. Doggone, I wonder who that masked hombre is. Hey, Judge! Judge! That tall critter! He's wearing a mask! What about it? Well, gosh, he... Mask or not, he said Lindy Lou was... 
was one of the most beautiful and talented women who ever appeared on the public stage. I reckon that man must be all right. It was nearly dark when the Lone Ranger and Tonto learned that the short man with the scar on his face had left Cimarron Gap by the southeast trail. Riding hard, they came within view of him, then slowed their horses to a walk. If it were any darker, we wouldn't be able to see him at all. That's right. You sure him scar, Thorndike? No, I'm not, Tonto. I... Rain up, Bosal. Oh, oh, scuttle, fella. Oh, fella. He's rained up near that farmhouse up ahead. Ah, let me see him. Easy, Silver. Steady a minute. Leave the horses here. We go the rest of the way on foot. Oh, uh-huh. Sneak up to home. Yes, he's up to something. As the Lone Ranger and Tonto moved nearer, they saw the man peer through the lighted window of Jim Sutton's small log cabin. As the light fell on his face, they saw that it was the man they wanted. No doubt of it, Tonto. He's Gar Thorndike. The masked man and Tonto advanced softly, hoping to capture the outlaw without gunplay. They had taken but a few quiet steps when two shots rang. Thorndike dropped in his tracks. The shots came from among those trees. That's right. Lie flat. Uh-huh. Hug the ground and see what happens. Door of the house open. Sutter coming out. Come on, you left slinging fry gushers. Show yourself. Jim, Jim, be careful. Harry, get back inside. Close that door. Jim, look. There by the window, there's a man on the ground. Great day. Hand me the lamp from the table. Jim, do be careful. This may be another one of the cowmen's tricks to get us out of here. Hurry with that lamp. I've got to see if this man is seriously hurt. Here it is. Who shot you, mister? Do you know? The double crossers. Jim, two men are coming this way. Uh, I'll take it easy, stranger. Tell me who shot you. I'll see that justice is done. Ho, 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 ho. Get your hands up this dish. Ice them, Sutton. You're covered. What's the idea of turning killer? Me? What are you talking about? Jim, these are the two men who tried to make us move away from here. Should have taken our advice. And you wouldn't be scheduled to hang for murder. Murder? I didn't shoot this man. There's no use denying it, Sutton. That's the trouble with you nesters. You're too quick to shoot. But you I tell you, everyone that comes to ask for grub or water for a horse is out to rob you. Jim, didn't shoot this man. You're all wrong. Uh, look at the window. Glass is smashed. I suppose you saw the critter looking in, so you shot him. I didn't. You can look at my rifle and six gun. Neither one has been fired. It's easy enough to reload. Keep an eye on Sutton Slim. I'll have a look at this man. Steady, boy. See if there's anything we can do for him. Yeah. I guess he's past all help. It looks bad for you, Sutton. But I tell you, I didn't shoot him. I didn't know anything about it until I heard the shots in the window smash. That's the truth. He was shot by someone over yonder. I get it. I thought you two were downright close at hand. You shot him. You shot him and you're trying to frame me. That's a serious charge, Sutton. If you make that statement to the judge, you better be prepared to back it with proof. You and the rest of the cattlemen wanted to get us out of here. You knew the law was on our side, so you're framing me for this murder. That'll be for the judge to decide. We'll have to take you into town. You can't do it. You can't. Jim won't have a chance with the way things are handled around here. Damn it. We're special deputies, and we got the right to shoot a man that resists arrest. But I'm a witness. Jim was sitting at the table reading a book when the shots were fired. Mrs. Sutton, I don't blame you for trying to clear your own husband, but it won't do any good. Jim's got to go to Judge Brennan and answer for this shooting. I won't do it. I know how much of a chance I'd have. If you want to take me, you'll have to shoot me. Well, I reckon if you want to. No, it that no, way, please. Don't do it, Lefty. Hey, what? There he is, Max. Don't turn your gun this way, unless you intend to shoot. Well, I sure as thunder do. Oh, my arm! My arm is busted! I doubt it. Look. Jim, Jim, who is this man? I don't know. My identity wouldn't mean anything to you, Jim. Oh, my arm. It may, however, mean something to you to know that I witnessed the shooting of this man. You, you did? I know you didn't do it. I'm going to see that you get a fair trial. Come somewhere. Jim, there. That man with the horses. He's an Indian. Watch these men, Toto. Oh, I have a look at this fellow. Ah, uh-huh. you watch him. He... He's dead. Who said he was dead? Isn't he? That man, the one called Lefty. He said he was. I see. Otto, bandage these wounds and take this man to our camp. Ah. Lefty, why did you say he was dead? I thought he was. Jim, 
You go into town with these two and face Judge Brennan. There's no law in the land that can find you guilty of murder until a dead man is produced. I'll follow along and see that you reach town safely. Jim, you, you better do as this masked man says. He seems to be on our side. Otto, I'll join you in camp. Ah. Judge Brennan was ready to hold court at any hour of the day or night. He was a unique figure, but his decisions were backed up by everyone in town. His eyes lighted with interest when he saw Jim Sutton enter the Lindy Lou with Lefty on one side and Slim on the other. Hey, what do you got there, Lefty? What's happening to your arm? I got creased with a bullet. Is this a critter that did it? No, but this man's under arrest. Mm. You're the nester, aren't you? My name is Jim Sutton. What's the charge, boys? Well, Judge, we figured it'd be murder, but now we're not so sure. Well, wait a minute. Save your testimony till I get the court open. Quiet! Quiet down, everybody. Court's in session. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Continue our story. Arrested on false charges, Jim Sutton was taken to Judge Brennan's Lindy Lou Cafe, where the grizzled old lawman called for order. This is a fine place to hold court. Sutton, you get this straight. We got no fancy courtroom somewhere on Gap, but by golly, we got justice that protects our citizens. Just Another peep out of you and I'll find you for contempt. Court will now hear the testimony of the witnesses. You first, Lefty. Well, me and Slim was riding near Sutton's log house when we heard shots. We went close and found Sutton at the door with his gun in hand and a stranger sprawled on the ground. I thought he was dead. That's right, Judge. Just like Lefty says. Court will now hear the defense. Speak up, Sutton. My wife and I heard two shots. And a bullet or two came through our window. I grabbed my gun and ran out. I saw a man on the ground. Then these two deputies came and charged me with murder. Where's the man who was shot? Well, Judge, uh, while me and Slim were making the arrest, a masked man came up. A masked man? Yes. I went from a gun, but he winged me. Had an Indian with him. Told the redskin to take the man who got shot to a camp somewhere. You don't know whether the man was dead or not? I thought he was, but when the masked man looked Look at here, him, he Look here, Judge Brennan. He... I think these two deputies of yours fired the shots, hoping to frame me for murder. Now, if you know anything about law... You know, blamed well, you can't prove murder without a corpse. Don't tell me the law. But you can't... Shut up. I'm not finding you guilty of murder. But the testimony is that you fired a shot or two at a man unknown. You get out of these parts at daybreak. But I'm not guilty. I You ch- prove someone else done the shooting, you can come back. But if you're around here at daybreak, by golly, you'll hang. That's my rule in court's adjourned. <laughs> It was late at night when Jim Sutton returned to his log house. Though dejection was heavy on his face, his wife was happy to see him alive. Oh, Jim. Jim, I'd half expected they'd hang you. No, not exactly, Mary. The judge is convinced that I shot that man. But he knows he can't find me guilty of murder until the corpse is found. Are, Are lawmen looking for the corpse? No. 
I've been told to get out of here by daybreak. Get out? You mean leave our farm? Yes. But but our seed's all planted. Our house is built. I know. Oh, I should have realized there was no use trying to fight the cattlemen. Jim, the, the more I think of it, the more sure I am that those deputies did the shooting. If it hadn't been for that masked man, they'd have had you on a murder charge. Did you see any more of him? The masked man? No. He disappeared somewhere between here and town. I... There he is. What? I heard Judge Bell's verdict, Jim. You... you did? What about the man who was shot? He's dead. Oh. Yes, he was dead when I examined him. I had Tonner move him in the hope that it would forestall a murder charge. What kind of law is there in this part of the country? Jim, it's hard for you to understand But it's the law of what is best for the greatest number. You think Judge Brennan is doing right? The men around here have all gone in for cattle raising on the open range. They resent the intrusion of the farmer who plows and cultivates the land and builds fences. The government gave us this land. Eventually, the cattlemen will learn to live peacefully with the farmers. But it will take time. Why don't those deputies just shoot me and let it go at that? Why do they take the trouble to frame me for murder? Judge Brennan wouldn't stand for that. You were framed. I'm sure he knows nothing about it. I think he honestly tries to make the right decisions. He didn't give me much of a trial. It was your word against that of two witnesses, both of whom Judge Brennan trusts. Why, Judge Brennan lets murderers go free if they're his friends. Life is cheap out here. A man shoots in defense of his life or in a fair fight. Judge Brennan doesn't call it murder. Now, Jim, remember the judge gave you a chance. A chance? He said you could stay here if you prove that you didn't fire the shots. How can I prove that? By producing the men who did. But how? Leave that to me. Pack some of your things in your wagon and leave here before daybreak, just as the judge ordered. Return tomorrow at sunset. Go to Judge Brennan at the Lindy Lou. And get hung. I promise you, Jim, you'll not hang. Now I must go. I have a lot of writing to do before tomorrow at sunset. Adios. Mary, what... What do you make of that man? Jim, I, I feel we can trust him in spite of his mask. We're going to leave, just as he said, and, and return tomorrow at sunset. While Tonto remained in camp, the Lone Ranger rode hard through the night maintaining a steady ground-covering lope that brought him into Frontier Town as the first faint light of dawn showed on the eastern horizon. He went directly to the home of Marshal Matt Miller and roused the lawman from sleep. Well, that's the situation, Marshal. If you're willing to go with me, I think you can help. You have a plan in mind? Yes, I have. Well, past experience has taught me that your plans are pretty good. Give me time to dress and saddle up, and I'll be with you. Shortly before sunset, Marshal Miller rode into Cimarron Gap alone. He dismounted in front of the Lindley Lou and approached Slim and Lefty, who were seated on the porch. Howdy, James. Howdy. Howdy. I'm looking for Judge Brennan. Right inside. Thanks. Hey, Slim, did you see his badge? He's a United States Marshal. What's he doing here? I don't know. I was... Maybe we shouldn't have pulled that trick last night. Lefty. You know who that critter was that was shot? Scar Thorndike. He was no doggone good. Just the same. If the judge ever guessed the truth of the way that we tried to frame Sutton, hey, I'm Lefty. afraid it. Look at that way. Great day. It's Jim Sutton and his wife. He's got a pile of nerve to come back here. Oh, 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 oh. What are you doing here, Sutton? Judge told you to clear out. He said I should come back when I could prove I didn't shoot that man last night. Hey, what's this? What's this I hear? I hear someone talking to Sutton. There he is, Judge. I want to see you, Judge Brennan. You shouldn't have come back here, Sutton. You heard my ruling. Look, Jim. That man with the judge is wearing a marshal's badge. You needn't count on him helping you any. He don't interfere with the law around here. You're the marshal, aren't you? That's right. Miller's the name. My name is Sutton. And this is my wife. And we want some justice. I reckon Judge Brennan will give you a square deal all the way through. But he hey, told Judge, him. Judge, look, those two horsemen. Hey, those are the ones... That's the masked man we told you about. They're the ones that hit the man who got shot. Hello, Marshal Miller. 
Uh, I see you got here a little ahead of me. A little. Miller, do you know that mask man? We've met. Marshal Miller, have you told the judge why you came to Cimarron Gap? No, Chet. Judge Brennan, there's been an outlaw around this part of the country. It's wanted for mail robbery and murder. I have a handbill on him. Here it is. There's his picture. He's called Scott Thorndike. Thorndike? Let me see that handbill. $500 reward for him, dead or alive. I saw him a little while ago in this masked man's camp. Dead. Jim, isn't that the man you're accused of shooting? Yes, it is. Boy, that critter was in my cafe yesterday. If I'd have known there was $500 riding on his ugly head... It I... looks to me as if Jim Sutton's entitled to that reward. Jim! That is, unless Slim and Lefty made a mistake. Huh? Uh, a mistake, you say? Well, as I told you last night, I was near enough to see Scar Thorndike fall. There were several shots fired. Probably you fired at the same time Sutton did. Of course, if you're so sure that it was Sutton who fired all the shots... Well, we I... uh, come to think of it, we did unravel a couple of bullets. I didn't fire at all. Mary will tell you that. Now, hold on, Sutton. You realize you're cutting yourself out of a nice reward? I can't help it. I never fired a shot. Well, that settles it, then. You can give us that reward. How about it, Slim? Well, thinking it over, Lefty, yeah, I guess that's right. Well, sure. Mm. <laughs> what about it, Judge Brennan? Well, if Slim and Lefty and the masked man are all agreed, I guess you got no choice, Marshal. All right, then. I'll make out the report so that these two deputies share equally. Is that right? Yeah, that's Good. right. <laughs> no, you two mangy, double-dyed <laughs> schemers, huh? I'll have my say. Well, well, I told you two to find some way the Nestor was busting the law. Yeah, but... Instead of that, you tried to frame him for murder. Now, no, Judge... Don't argue, Fi. I can put two and two together. I saw the two of you leave here right after Scar Thorndike yesterday. Huh? Chances are you sent him to Sutton's house and followed him and drilled him. Hey, now, Judge, you can't say things like, like that. Like blazes, I can't. I'm holding court right here on the veranda. Charging the two of you with perjury. With giving false testimony. With lying to me. Well, with framing a man who's innocent. And for nearly getting Sutton hung for a thing he didn't do. That's five counts again, you. But, but, don't interrupt the court. Fine is fifty dollars for each count. Five counts makes you fine two hundred and fifty dollars each. Yeah, but we... it just happens that's the amount you're going to collect as reward money. And I'm awarding that same to Jim Sutton as damages. Why? But... What's more, I'm firing you two as deputies. Give me your badges. Court's adjourned. Hey, but... Well, now, does that mean that I'm in the clear? It means you're to settle down and raise your crops. By thunder, you better stay inside the law. I'll run you off in a hurry. Now, you two get out of here. <laughs> well, what do you think of him, Marshal? Well, it's an unusual brand of justice, but it's justice. That's how I think. What are you two talking about? Judge Brennan, I want to talk to you. Mr. You and that mask had better vamoose. I'm downright suspicious of mask men. Lindy Lou would like to see you. Who? The girl you used to know as Lindy Lou. Mr. When you mentioned that name... What did you say? She'd like to see me. Yes. She's living in Frontier Town. Her husband died a long time ago. You mean to say, Lindy Lou, she, she's a widow? She's in the West? Runs a boarding house in Frontier Town. It's not far from my office. Oh, gosh. There's a job for you in Frontier Town. You see, Judge Knott would like to have you take his place on the bench. You mean to say I'm to have a chance to sit in a real court? As long as you can be fair and honest. I think Lindy Lou will keep him that way. In Frontier Town? Yes. It's true, Brennan. What do you say about it? What do I say? Great day in the morning. Just give me time to close up this cafe and I'll be on my way to Frontier Town. I'll tell Judge Knott you're coming. Tell him all I'm coming. Tell Lindy Lou I'm heading for town with the biggest wagon load of presents any woman ever seen. Right, easy, big fellow. One fellow in. Come on, Marshal. Marshal, who in thunder is that masked man? <laughs> He's your kind of man, Brennan. He deals in justice. He's called the Lone Ranger.
is a copyrighted feature originated by George W. Trendle and directed by Charles D. Livingston. This story was written by Fran Stryker. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.